morning, friends. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage. And after that intro, I feel like I have to stay very upbeat and lively <laughs> this morning. Uh, I wanted to show you how we can do some transfers. And the beautiful thing about these image transfers is you can use your own pictures. There is an app called Waterlog for your iPad. Uh, or your iPhone. It's two dollars and ninety-nine cents waterlog. You can turn any picture into a watercolor. Now you don't have to use that. I'm just trying to give you some ideas. For this metal piece, what I'm going to do is paint the whole thing with chalk paint because chalk paint makes an excellent base for the transfers. And by the way, you can always decoupage around the transfers. One of the best reasons for using transfers, because you may say, why not just decoupage? First of all, there are no lines. If you make a copy of something of your own and you make a, you try to decoupage with it, you'll, you'll have lines and you'll have to apply layer and layer and layer of decoupage glue in order to eliminate those lines around the outside. This eliminates that, you'll just see a plain flat surface the other thing, which is the best part, is you can use your own artwork, your own images. So that opens up a whole new world for you in regards to what you can do. You do need to make a laser print. I went on Pinterest and I just looked up vintage soap labels and I found this one and I printed it out in reverse. Now I do have a laser printer I'm going to put all of these supplies on my website, which is called Upcycle with Decoupage. Just Google Upcycle with Decoupage and you'll see my website come right up. And I will put a link to my website right below this video in the description. Whatever is highlighted in blue, you can click on that. Now, this here's my laser print. I want to stress that the laser, it's really the best way to go. You can get quite frustrated when you try to use inkjet prints because they just they just don't work as well. Now I am using gel medium and this is a gloss medium. I have tried decoupage glues and you can use a decoupage glue in place of the gel medium. For some reason, I have found that the gel mediums just work better. And the first thing I'm going to do is cover my whole surface here, where all of this writing is, with the gel medium. And at first I'm just going to use a brush to put it on. Then I'm going to use my fingers, just to smooth it out a little bit. And you can put this in a dry room to dry with the heat on. You can put it in the oven. I actually put it in my warming drawer uh, in the oven for maybe about 15 to 20 minutes. Now I'm going to cut this image out and I'm going right up to the edge. I'm just cutting away the excess paper right here. But now I'm going to go right up against the edge of this and just cut out exactly what I need. Now I'm going to place it face down and I'm just playing around with it a little bit here because I want to make sure that I've got it centered properly, uh, as straight as I can get it. And I made this to the size that I wanted, meaning when I printed this out off of my computer, the printer asked me what size I wanted and I deliberately shrunk it to a smaller size. You can make these the size of the full canvas if you want, or go to blockposters.com and make a poster size transfer for free from your computer. I'm taking the gel medium and I'm placing it down right where I'm going to put my image, but you just wanna work in one corner first. You don't want any lumps in here. Now that that one corner is secure, I'm taking a hard brayer. This is not like a sponge roller, it's a very hard rubber. And what I'm doing is I'm going to, again, I'm just making sure this is in the right placement. I am rolling this brayer over the corner of the paper and I just wiped away any of the excess gel medium that's coming out from underneath. And now I'm going to follow these same steps around the rest of this image. It's okay if you get some on the image, it's not a problem. You're really going to use the brayer to push any excess out. 
and it's really important that you get all of the excess out from underneath. You want this as flat as it can possibly be to the surface. If you decoupage, you may even have one of these brayers since they can come in very handy. And again, I'm just adding the gel medium here onto my surface and I'm going to use the brayer one more time. One more thing that's important, when you wipe away the excess, there's a little bit of excess coming out from under the image. When you wipe that away, you wanna make sure you wipe the brayer off too. Now that I'm all done, I'm going to put this aside to dry and some people tell you to dry it overnight. I put it in the warming drawer, I left it in there for a little while and it was dry within a half an hour. I'm very impatient that way. This is a sanding block and I just wanted to add this uh, in the video. I wet the sanding block and it's a very fine grit and I didn't realize that ha that helps speed up the process of sanding down the chalk paint. I tried to sand it dry and it was very difficult because chalk paint is pretty sturdy. But when I wet the sponge, I was able to just age this metal piece uh, just a little bit more in certain areas. And before you put this aside to dry, by the way, just make sure you look at this on an angle to make sure that this paper is completely flat. There's no bumps, no air bubbles. There's, there shouldn't be any wrinkles as long as you placed it down carefully like that. And now we'll put it aside to dry. So now that this is completely dry, I am taking a rough, wet rag and I'm wiping the whole back of this transfer. Normally you would see the image start to come through. I did accidentally get a little bit of the gel medium on the back, which is protecting the paper. So I'm going to have to rub that much harder. You still need to go through this process where you take the wet rag and you wipe away the paper, the backing. Now you wanna use a combination of your fingers and the rag to keep pulling away the excess paper. And if you can, if you can pull off larger strips at one time, that's even better. And you just keep doing this until you pull away all of the paper on the back until finally, here's what the transfer looks like. And by the way, this is a really messy craft, so you want to make sure you have either some drop cloth down or work in an area where you're not too worried about getting all of these paper pieces. And you see the outside of this? You can decoupage napkins around this if you wanted to surround it. You could still add on to this. I like it just the way it is. So what I'm going to do is take a top coat and I'm using the Liquitex Matte Varnish and I am covering the whole piece just to protect it. And now I will move on to the next project. And you're really going to follow the same instructions. This is the canvas. Now I took a picture of my own, printed it on my laser printer, and I applied the gel medium, let it dry, and I'm now cutting the image. And I just wanna place it in the right place, face down over my canvas. And it's very important to just work in one section at a time. If you try to lay this all down at once, there will be bumps and wrinkles and lines. So just one section at a time, get that excess medium out or decoupage glue, whatever you're using, make sure to wipe off your brayer. Put this aside to dry. Don't put this in the oven because the canvas could warp. Just put it aside near a dry a heater or a warm in a warm room. Then once it's dry, wet rag or very damp but rough rag to start this out to remove the paper, then using my fingers, and I'm going to wipe away all of the paper. And you can see that this gets really messy, so I'll clean that all up with a rag. I just wanted to show you how messy this can get underneath here. <laughs> Look at all the paper. <laughs> and then that's how it looks now. I'll show you a better picture at the end of this video. Here's a plain piece of wood. I followed the same exact steps, except I did not use any chalk paint or any paint. I flipped this image, 
that I found on Pinterest. I just looked up vintage soap labels, printed it, printed it out on my laser printer, and transferred it on here following the same exact steps. And again, with both of these pieces, I used the Liquitex matte varnish. You can put a gloss on this too, but I put the varnish over the top. And then on the glass, I followed all of the same steps, applied the gel medium to the front of the transfer, let it dry, then applied gel medium onto the glass, applied the transfer, put this aside to dry. This was one of those small picture frames that we got at a wedding we went to. You know how you walk in and on the reception table, they're letting you know where you're seated and they have your name and the table number in these little frames. So I wanted to reuse the frame. Now I did chalk paint the back of this white to make this image pop more. However, I do have a, an older video that shows you how to do these transfers on glass because they're sheer and they come out beautifully when you're doing votives. But it looks really pretty and a little bit aged. I didn't like it on the darker background, but you could do that also. And I just reassembled this and put it back together and followed all of the same steps really for all four of these, except I didn't use the chalk paint on the wood or on the glass. And by the way, here is how a transfer looks on a larger piece of glass that I had them cut at the hardware store for me. Most local hardware stores will do this for you. And I'm then going to use copper tape, which you can get on my website. It frames the outside, it's really pretty. And then I'm just going to put it in one of these stands and set it up as a picture. And here is how the rest of our transfers look. And guys, I am always happy to help you out with any questions. Upcycle with Decoupage is also on Facebook. You can go over and like and follow the page. Subscriptions mean everything to us uh, when we're here on YouTube. So thank you so much for subscribing. Just go down below this video and you'll see a red button that says subscribe. If you click on that, it's a huge help to me and it helps me keep making my videos for you. And I'm going to just leave you with a few images from the blizzard that we just got hit with, a couple of feet of snow. It's quite pretty out there. <laughs> but I wanted to say thank you again, guys. I will see you next week with another video. Hope you're all well and safe and warm. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye.